Hey everyone, this is Ra with Code Academy. I'm a software developer based out of Seattle, Washington. In this video, we're going to walk through the PHP project number guessing game. So far, we've learned the basics of working with conditionals and logic in PHP. Conditionals make it possible for programs to decide how to react to a wide variety of situations. To complete this project, you'll need to be familiar with how to capture user input, how to use conditionals and comparison operators to shape the logic of your program, and how to define and call functions. All right, let's get started. OK, in this PHP number guessing project, we're going to create a game in which we generate a random number between 1 and 10. We're going to run this game 10 times for the user. And then following that, we're going to share some information about their guessing abilities and tendencies. So let's get started with step one. As we mentioned, we're going to check how often a player can guess a randomly generated number. Then following a certain number of rounds, We'll let them know whether their tendency was to guess too high or to guess too low. So we'll begin by creating several variables that we'll set to a value of zero. The first is play count, which will keep track of how many rounds the game has been played so far. We'll set this initially to zero. We'll follow that with the variable correct guesses. And this is going to track how many times they've guessed correctly, which will be zero in the initial game state. Following that, guess high, which will track how many times a player has made a guess higher than the actual random number generated. And then finally, a variable guess low, which will check how many times a player has guessed lower than the randomly generated number. OK, let's mark step one as complete, and we'll move on to step two. Before we actually begin our game, we want to explain to the player how it works. So let's go ahead and echo out a statement letting them know how the game is operated. If you need any suggestions, we've provided some text in the hint that you can display to the user. I'll go ahead and copy this and paste it in. Now, I like to check my code early and often as I'm creating a program. And so to run our program, we'll make sure that we've saved our code. And to run our program, we'll type in php index.php. So we can see when our program runs our user is greeted with a message. I'm going to think of numbers between 1 and 10 inclusive. Do you think you can guess correctly? Perfect. Let's mark step 2 as complete. And we'll move on to step 3. Now, the actual gameplay is going to take place within a function. So we'll create a function guess number. So we use the function keyword. Then we'll name our function guess number. And this doesn't take any arguments. Now, let's mark step 3 as complete. And we'll move on to step 4. So we're going to need these variables we declared within our function. So we should declare them as global variables inside of our function. We can do this with the global keyword. And then you can type these out. Or if you want to make sure that you don't make any typos, you can copy and paste each one of them in. Great. Let's mark step four as complete, and we'll move on to step five. Now, the first thing we want to do when our guess number function is called is increment the value of play count by one. So we'll name our variable play count and we'll increment it by a value of one. And so this means every time we play a round of our game, play count, which tracks the round that we're on, will be incremented by a value of one. And again, I like to make sure that my code is working as expected as I'm going through a project. So I'm going to go ahead and echo out the value of play count. Now what you'll notice is that if we save our code and then we run our code, we don't echo out that value. That's because it's within a function. So let's go ahead and call our function guess number. And I'm going to go ahead and I call it two times. You'll see why in a moment. If we save our code and then run our code, we'll see our introductory text. And then we'll see play count with the value of one the first time we call our guess number function. And then we'll see it incremented to a value of 2 the second time we call it. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out my terminal. And I'm going to remove this echo statement. OK, we can mark step 5 as complete and move on to step 6. And now the next thing we want to do is generate a random number for this round. And remember, we want that number to be between 1 and 10 inclusive. Now, if you'll remember from our interactive lessons, we can accomplish this by using the rand method and passing in the numbers 1 and 10. And we want to make sure to save this to a variable so we can access the value later. So we'll go ahead and call this variable none. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure a random number is being generated as we would expect. So I'll echo out the value of our variable num. We'll save our code and we're calling our function twice. So we can see that we get a 10 and an 8. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this echo statement. Mark step 6 is complete and we'll move on to step 7. In this step, we want to prompt the player for their guess. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and remind them about what we want them to do. So we'll simply echo out a message, make your guess. And for formatting reasons, I'm going to go ahead and add these new line symbols. But feel free to experiment on your own to see what format looks and works best for you. OK, well, mark step 7 is complete, and we'll move on to step 8. It's time to get the player's guess. Now, if you'll remember, we can go ahead and accomplish this with the read line function. And we're going to want to save this to a variable so that we can access it later. And so I'm going to go ahead and choose the name guess for my variable name and set it equal to read line. And then within the quotes, we're going to go ahead and use these two greater than symbols. These aren't required, but we suggest passing them in as it helps the player to see where they're typing. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've captured this value as I expected. So I'm going to go ahead and echo out the value of guess. OK, now let's go ahead and make sure that we've saved our code. And let's run our program. OK, we're prompted for a guess. Pass the number 4. And we see that the output is 4 from line 20. And we'll try this one more time just because we called our function twice. And we output the number 6 that captures user input of 6. All right, great. Let's mark step 8 as complete. And we'll move on to step 9. Now, step 9, we're going to acknowledge a challenge that we have. The user is giving an input, which is being captured as a string. However, the random number is an integer. Now, by looking in our terminal, it's not clear that the user's input of 4 or the output of 4 is a string. It probably looks to you like a number. So PHP has a method that we can use that if we feed a value into the method, it will tell us what type of value it is. So if we use the get type method, we can pass in guess. And now if we save our code, and if we run our program, when we're prompted for a guess and we pass in the number 4, on line 20, the user input of 4, when passed into the get type method, gives us a value of string. So this just confirms that we're going to have a problem comparing strings to integers. And so we want to convert our string to an integer. Now this is a great opportunity to stretch your research muscles. You can open up your web browser and do a search with keywords such as PHP string to int and see what results pop up. Or you could go to the PHP documents and try to find a method that will allow you to do this. You could also check our hint to find a built-in PHP function that converts a string to an integer value. So we'll go ahead and do that. The int val is going to give us this possibility. As we can see, we can set the value of guess which on line 19 is currently a string. And we can call int val and pass in the value of guess from line 19. And it will be converted to an integer and saved to our guess variable. And to confirm that this has worked correctly, we'll go ahead and echo get type guess to make the conversion took place as we expected. So I'll go ahead and clear out the terminal. And I'm going to remove one of our function calls and save our code. Now we'll go ahead and call our program to run. And we'll make our guess. We'll type in 4. And we can see that the type of the value that the user provided was converted to an integer, just as we hoped. Perfect. Let's mark step 9 as complete. And we'll move on to step 10. I'm going to remove line 21, as we no longer need to print this to the terminal. And we want to start to print some information about the current round to the player. We want to let them know the round that they're on, what the random number was, and what they guessed. And if you had any problems figuring that out on your own, you could check the hint for details. OK, let's go ahead and save our code. I'll clear the terminal. And we'll go ahead and run our program. The user is prompted to make a guess. I'll pass in the number 4. And we're displaying round 1. The number generated was 1. And the player's guess was 4. Perfect. We'll mark step 10 is complete. And we'll move on to step 11. 
Now remember, one of the goals of the game is to let the player know how many times they guessed correctly and also share with them if their tendency was to guess too high or to guess too low. To accomplish that, we're going to need to use our global variables correct guesses, guess high, and guess low. So first we'll check if the user guess was equal to the random number generated. If that's true, then our variable correct guesses set to zero when the game started will be incremented by one. The next condition we'll check is if the player's guess was greater than the randomly generated number, then we want to increment guess high by a value of one. Then finally, if the user guess was less than the randomly generated number, then we want to increment guess low by a value of one. Okay, let's mark step 11 is complete, and we'll move on to step 12. Right now we're calling the guess number function one time. Let's go ahead and call this 10 times. All right, perfect. We'll mark step 12 is complete and move on to step 13. We want to calculate the percentage of guesses the player got right and save this value as a variable. So we'll create a variable percent correct and we'll set this equal to correct guesses. And remember, this is incremented by one every time the user's guess and the random number generated were the same. And we'll divide that by play count. And remember, play count is incremented every time the guess number function is called. So it's going to be incremented 10 times in this case. And then we'll multiply correct guesses divided by play count by 100 for our percentage. OK, we'll mark step 13 as complete and move on to step 14. We want to let the player know what percentage of time they guessed correctly. So we'll echo out the following message, and we'll put this on a new line. After play count, so in our case, we're calling the guess number function 10 times, so our play count is going to be 10. If we'd only called it five times, then play count would only be five rounds. Here are some facts about your guessing. And I'll put this on a new line. You guessed the number correctly percent correct. And remember, percent correct is correct guesses divided by play count multiplied by 100. Then we'll use the percentage symbol of the time. OK, let's make sure that we have saved our code. And let's run our program. We get our message, then a request to make a guess, and we'll go ahead and guess 10 times. OK, so after 10 rounds, here's some facts about your guessing. You guessed the number correctly 10% of the time. All right, our game's working just as we would expect. OK, we're just about done. So on line 15, we want to run a little bit of analysis. We want to share with the user if they tended to guess too high or if they tended to guess too low. And we can accomplish this with the variables guess high and guess low. So we'll say if guess high is greater than guess low. And remember, this is determined in our function. If the user's guess was higher than the randomly generated number, then guess high was incremented by 1. And if the user's guess was less than the randomly generated number, then guess low was incremented by 1. If that's the case, then we'll echo out this message. However, we'll do an else if. And we won't simply do an else because there's a possibility that there were an equal amount of guessing two highs and two lows. So we'll check else if guess high was less than guess low. If that's the case, then we'll just echo out this message. When you guessed wrong, you tended to guess low. OK, let's mark step 15 is complete. We'll clear out the terminal. And we'll run our program. I'll make a number of guesses. All right, after 10 rounds, we guessed correctly 0% of the time. 
And now our additional information is showing. When you guessed wrong, you tended to guess high. Okay, now on to step 16. Take some time and play your game. Again, you can run your program by typing in PHP, index.php as we've been doing, and you can confirm that the game is working properly as you would expect. If at any point in the game as you're playing, if you're making some guesses and you want to exit it before you finish playing your game, you can always quit your program by typing in Control C. And again, to clear the terminal, as you've seen me do, you can just type in the clear command. Perfect. Let's mark step 16 is complete. And finally, in step 17, once you've confirmed that your game is working properly, you can make it your own. We've listed a few suggestions down below, whether it's adding some input validation to make sure that the user guesses between 1 and 10, or creating some more complicated analysis, those features are up to you. We'd love to hear and see what you create. All right, great job. We covered a lot of ground, and we saw how conditionals make it possible for programs to decide how to respond to user input in a variety of situations. This is Rob with Codecademy. Happy coding.